share just a quick scripture in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8 and verse number 9. Please don't hold my singing against you tonight. Or against me, not against you. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Someone say amen to God's word. Thank you for being reverent. You may be seated today. Whatsoever things are noble. What does it mean to be noble? What, What does it mean to be natural? I know that... We get so confused in our doctrine and the way that we were raised and, and, and the way things are taught to us through life. And for some reason, there's this misnomer that when we become a Christian, that we just become perfect. We don't think bad thoughts anymore. We don't sin anymore. We don't get mad at our spouse we don't get mad at our kids and be too hard on our kids sometimes we don't get road rage we don't get our feelings hurt and you think about that we have this known her and I know him understand hey, I've been saved sanctified filled I understand sanctification I understand that that we can get to a point where I don't believe you sin a little bit more or less every day. I don't believe that. Dad used to always say it's never less, it's always more. I believe you can go through a day without sinning. I don't believe we have to sin every day. But if we sin, we have an advocate to the Father. And what you have to understand tonight to help you, to help us in what we struggle with in life, natural. Our natural instinct in who we really are is sin. Is failure. Is dishonesty. Is nakedness. Is perversion. Ungodliness. When these little babies were born, as precious as they are, what, we got five people pregnant in the church right now having babies, I think, maybe even more. We've been having all these kids, God's blessing so much. And I love these precious children. But their natural instinct that they're born into is sin. And there has to come a time in their life that they understand that, that they understand that. that let, me, let me just give you some scripture about it. 1 John 1 and 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. You think you're perfect? I don't think you do. I I, I think all of us know that we're not. Right? We all know that we do things wrong. wrong. He said, if you think you you don't need salvation, you think you don't need God, you're deceiving yourself. We need God. Why? Because our natural, who we are, is not right. Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we no longer be slaves to sin. And the reason that some of you struggle is because you're still a slave to your sin. You may think that you're saved or you may have went through the process of salvation and even baptized in water but you got to get to the point where those addictions and those perversions and those things don't rule your life you can get victory over those things Romans 8 and 8 and those who are of the flesh can not please God you say I feel like God's always mad at me I feel like I can never do what's right Well, you're probably leading on the natural side of you than the spiritual side of you. Colossians 3 and 5, Therefore consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, greed, 
which amounts to adultery. These things are put into us naturally. How come a kid that doesn't know anything at two or three or four years old is afraid of the dark? How come they'll take a cookie and instantly they'll lie to you and tell you that they didn't? You remember the first time your kids ever lied to you? It breaks your heart. It's their nature. It's natural to them to sin. It's natural on them. And what we have to do as believers, we have to understand who the enemy is and get victory over those things in our life. And the struggle that some of us are dealing with in our life is not a struggle that God isn't God and God isn't awesome and God doesn't love us, but we are fighting against the natural with the supernatural. With God, it's supernatural. Regeneration, justification comes in and we become a new creature in God. That is a supernatural thing. That's not natural. Romans 5 and 12, therefore, just as, as through one man's sin entered into the world, that death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. The most godly people in this room have sinned in their life. They've made mistakes. Because we battle against the natural. Jeremiah 17, 11, the heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? How come relationships end? How come there's deadbeat mothers and deadbeat fathers? How could anyone abuse a child? How could anyone hurt their children? How could a child hurt their parent? How many people are in our county jails tonight? How many people should be in jails? How many people are passed out on their couch tonight because of the natural and they're living in the natural? You cannot walk in the natural and be godly. You have to walk in the spirit and the anointing of God. Our nature is to sin. Example, if you hurt me, I'll hurt you. Back in the Bible, what they call it? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? It literally was the law. You killed one of my sheep, then I got to come and kill your best sheep. You took one of my cattle, I came and took. That's the way we are in our nature. If somebody hurts us, what do we do? We hurt them back. Somebody does us wrong, we got to hurt, we got to do them back, amen? We got to be able to do it the same way. Think about anger, how anger is kindled inside of us. It's our nature. The Bible says be angry and sin not. You can be angry, you don't have to be crazy about it. Think about jealousy. The biggest deal that we deal with, that I deal with, with dealing with people every day in my life is jealousy. This one being jealous of that one, jealous of this anointing, jealous of this voice, jealous of this speaking ability, jealous of this car, jealous of this house that they live in. Je and, and if I ask you, and you wanted to be real tonight about being natural, if I said, how many of you, if you will admit it, deal with jealousy in your life? If I ask you to raise your hand, you don't have to, but if I ask you to raise your hand, I guarantee you that two-thirds of you would raise your hand whether you want. Why? Because it's our nature. It's natural for us. That is our natural being because of Adam and Eve and what happened in the garden. And in order to live a victorious life, we must be able to do the opposite of what is natural. Did you comprehend that? It's almost like whatever you feel like you need to do, you need to do the opposite. Do you really believe that? That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Sometimes when we think of how we should respond to a situation and we think about it really the next day, it's because our spirit has time to talk to our natural man and, and war against each other. And when we wake up the next morning, we feel different about it. There's some of you used to be angry. You're not angry anymore. You used to have unforgiveness. You're not unfor What is it? It's because their spirit man deals with the natural and we can get victory over those things. Now, I want to give you the one of the best examples in Isaiah chapter 14. The natural, which is Satan, and the supernatural, 
which is Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 14, speaking of Satan, Lucifer, the falling angel, Listen to what the Bible says here in Isaiah chapter 14, verse number 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which dideth weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend unto the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. There are five things that Lucifer depicted that was his goal and what caused him to be kicked out of heaven and what caused sin in the garden. Listen to me, I'm open, man. If you'll stick with me, God's got something he wants to teach you tonight. Five things. Look about right there in verse number 13. For I said in your heart, number one, I will ascend into heaven. You think about that. You think about when the devil tempted Jesus. How did he tempt him? What did he say to him? He offered him everything that he could have. The second thing, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. The third thing, I will set above the mountain of congregation in the sides of the north. The fourth thing, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. The fifth thing, I will be like the most high. Five things which is natural. We want to elevate ourselves above everyone else. We want to make ourselves better than everyone else. Our problems are bigger than anybody else's. We're more important than anybody else in our natural. Right? If I ask you today, who has the worst problems going on in this room today? There's some of you that say, my problems are worse than anyone else. Some of you say, well, I think my problems are bad. Then you hear what somebody else is going through and you realize, I complained about not having any shoes until I met the man that didn't have any feet. That no matter how bad we think we have it, there's always people that have it a little bit worse than we have it. At least you're not at the funeral home making arrangements for your child tonight. At least you're not burying your mother in the morning or your father. At least you're not taking radiation and they sent you home to die or the loved one that you die. Some people in this room are dealing with those things. And our nature is that we will edify ourselves to be bigger than everybody else. And we bring our attitudes on the stage. And we bring our attitudes through the door. And we, and we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And the Bible warns us against that, right? Why? Because that's natural. That's what the devil wants us to do. But the contrary, the opposite of that, we go to Philippians chapter 2 when we talk about describing Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2, listen to what he said in verse number 5. Let this mind be in you, which also is Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation. It wasn't natural. He was God. He was as much God as God himself. He was as much God as the Holy Spirit. He made no error about being equal with God and even being Lord. He did not care of his reputation. What did Satan say? I want to elevate myself to be as high in the heavens. I want to elevate myself to be as God, right? What did Jesus say? He said, being in the form of Robert equal to God, that he himself had no reputation, and took upon the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being formed and fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, the five things that the, the devil had, ascending himself high, setting himself high, right? That the, that's the natural thing, right? This is what Jesus said. Number one, in verse number seven, he made himself of no reputation. Number two, he took on the form of a servant. A servant has no, has no title. A servant has no elegancy. Sometimes the worst thing that someone can get in a church is a title, 
because they trade their towel for their title. And they no longer are a servant anymore. They're more consumed with their title than being a servant. What did Jesus do? He became a servant. He was made in the likeness of men. He didn't try to be better than men. He humbled himself, and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Here's an example of what Satan says is natural, and here's an example of what Jesus says we should be. We should be a servant. We should humble ourselves. And he gives a great example on the Servant of the Mount. And I was listening to the Sermon on the Mount. I was reading. I like to, I like to have the Bible read to me. And we know the first part of Matthew chapter 5 are the Beatitudes, you know, blessed are they that are persecuted for my name's sake, you know, blessed are they to mourn, they'll be comforted. We know the Beatitudes, right? We know that in the first part of there. But at the end of chapter 5, Jesus deals with being unnatural. And Jesus gave us things that we need to apply to our life to help us be better men or women. And here's, I want to go over them with you. I want, I, I want you to, to, Brian, come and help me if you will. Would you grab a microphone? And I want you to read some scripture here. And then we're going to talk about them just for a moment. Matthew chapter 5, if you're following along. Verse number 21. Here, you can use this Bible if you want to. It's open. Let's go Matthew chapter 5. All right, verse number 21. I want you to read from 21. And I, I just feel, I want you to read the rest of the chapter. And I pray that you'll follow along. And I want you to think about what he said, and then we're going to break it down a little bit, talking about dealing with the natural. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in the danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger to the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on your way with him. Least your adversary deliver you to the judge, the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Assertly I say to you, you will be by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it is, was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from, your, from you. For it is more profitable for you to not have your members than to your whole body to cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, put it, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason, reason except sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman is, who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is his city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You have heard that it is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn your other to him also. 
If anyone wants to sue you and ha take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you to per persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren, what do you do more than the others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father is in heaven perfect. Give Brother Brian a hand for reading that scripture tonight. We're talking about the natural and the unnatural. Lucifer shows us the, un, the, the natural, who our sinful flesh is. Jesus portrays what is unnatural to be a child of God. We think that we're normal for being Christians. When in reality, to the seven billion people on this planet, I believe the New Testament called us a peculiar people. Why? Because we're not natural. There are ten quick things that I want to give you tonight from what Brother Brian read to us. That we are commanded to do whether we want to do them or not. Whether we like doing them, whether it's comfortable or whether it's uncomfortable, whether it's justified. I remember studying business law and understanding the saying that says the law is not always logic. And it's not. Sometimes there's laws that don't make sense. It doesn't matter if it makes sense to us or not. We are commanded to come out from among you and be a separate people, saith God. We are commanded to not be natural. The first way, you can go back to verse number 23. I want you to pay close attention to the wording of what Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, said. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you. Period. But wait a minute. I thought if I had all against my brother, I should go to him. Right? Well, the Bible does say that. But Jesus said right here, if you're going to worship God and you think of your brother that has something against you, go to him. That's unnatural. Psh, they done me wrong. I'm waiting on them to come to me. They got a problem with me. They need to come to me and work it out. What he's saying, if Wes is upset at me, and I know Wes is upset at me, and I'm going to come and worship God, that it is not my responsibility to wait on the Holy Spirit to deal with Wes to apologize. It is my responsibility in an unnatural way as a human being, as a Christian, and a brother of Christ to go to him and make it right. That's unnatural. That was my drop mic. It's, it's cool in a Verizon commercial. 
Number two, in verse number 25, he says, agree with your adversary quickly. While you're walking with your adversary, while they're going to take advantage of you, agree with them. Recognize it. Okay, now here's what we have to understand. Here's what we have to understand. When we apologize and we say the word if, it nulls the, it nulls the apology. Because if I say, Travis, I'm sorry if I offended you, and you're sitting there with tears in your eyes, shaking and convulsing because you're so upset at me. And I say to you, Travis, if I've offended you, I'm smacking you in the face because obviously I've offended you. You're shaking, you're crying. Whether I meant to or not, I offended you. It's just like sexual harassment in the workplace. How many of us managers have been through sexual harassment training, have to teach it to your employees, and you pass it down? It's not what you, it's not what you meant by what you said. It's how the person you said it to interpreted it. And you could say something and it had nothing to do with the sexual inclination. But if they took it that way, it's sexual harassment. He said the unnatural thing, agree with your adversary quicker. What is your adversary? That is your enemy. That are people that have done you wrong. And whether it's justified or not, it doesn't matter because justification is natural. Am I helping anybody tonight? This is Jesus at the Sermon on the Mount. Number three, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a truth, but I tell you not to resist an evil person. Whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him also, the other. Come here, Brian. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Somebody smacks you, he didn't say smack them back. And he wasn't talking about a physical smack. Sometimes he's talking about a smack on your character, a smack on your integrity, a smack on your countenance. I can't help but think about Jesus when they brought him before Pontius Pilate and the accusations were gathered up against him so strong and they began to speak blasphemy of him and how he was so evil but yet he was so good and the bible says that jesus spoke not a word this is unnatural Verse, the fourth one that I want to mention, if anyone, in verse number 40, if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, give him also your cloak also. If somebody wants to take from you, it would be just like me having on, I love my, I have a winter jacket, it's one of them long winter jackets that go way down below my knees, it keeps me warm. And when I have to preach a funeral and be out in the cold or work a funeral and it's really cold, I'll have my suit coat on and I'll, I'll button up my suit coat and I'll button up my jacket as well. Man, it helps you get warm. And Jesus was saying, if someone sues you and wants to take for you, don't just give them your black jacket. Give them your suit coat. That is unnatural. Number five, and whoever compelled you to go one mile, go with them too. You remember my message on going the extra mile just a few months ago. I don't have to go into that and digress into that tonight. The Roman law said, 
that any Jew, no matter what they were doing, a Roman soldier came by, whatever they were carrying, under the law, they had to carry it for them one mile. They had to stop everything they were doing. Jesus said, don't just go one, go two. He's saying, don't just do enough to get the awkward forgiveness out of the way and saying, I'm sorry. But go above and beyond. That is unnatural. Number six, verse number 42. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. If anyone asks you for anything, we should be willing. They say, I'm not loaning them any money. I'm not loaning them my... I, I think, gee, I think, I think it wasn't you and I directly, but I think your chainsaw's up at the farm. You got an electric chainsaw? I saw it uh, Monday. And I didn't borrow it from you. Eli did. Right? And I, I was up there Monday, and I was thinking, it's probably been up there about six or seven weeks. So we'll see G Monday. We're having our Memorial Day picnic up there, and, and uh, I got to get him his chainsaw back. And G could have had the attitude if I said, G, I need to borrow your leaf blower. He'd say, Preacher, you done had my chainsaw for six weeks. And you want to borrow my leaf blower now? Won't you just borrow my saw saw? I love talking carpenter talk. Amen? If anybody needs anything from you, give it to them. That is unnatural. I worked hard for this. This is mine. I'm saving my nest egg. I'm saving for retirement. I worked hard. Man, that's a good looking boat, Brian. Can I borrow it next Saturday and take my family out in it? Oh, they might scratch it. They might rip my seat. I remember a time about three or four years ago when Leanna and I truly submitted our life to God wholeheartedly with everything we had. And we said that nothing we have is ours anymore. It belongs to God. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Number seven, I'm going to go on. He said in verse number 44, but I say to you, tolerate your enemies. Put up with your enemies. No, that's not what it says, is it? Am I reading that wrong? Love. L-O-V-E. Love your enemies. That's not natural. I've always said, I heard a long time ago, and it's true, and I don't know who said it, and I wish I could so I could give them credit, but there is a very fine line between love and hate, and 99.9999999% of the time, somebody you hate, you once loved first. Right? And they hurt you. And that unnatural turns to our natural flesh. Not only should we love our enemies, but listen to number eight. Bless those who curse you. That means to pray for them. And to pray over them. 
that talk about you, that put you down, that talk about your kids, that talk about your family. Bless them. There's a big difference in forgiving and tolerating, but to literally lay your hands on someone and bless them. It's unnatural. Number nine, do good to those who hate you. Buy them a pizza. Send them flowers. Compliment them. Is this stepping on anybody's toes tonight? Number 10, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Now you're praying. Not only are you blessing them, you're praying for God to bless them. Folks, you can't live in the natural and be spiritual. We can't be the men and women that God wants us to be and be like everybody else. If we do, we're no better than them. And we are a slave to those that consume our thoughts. As I was praying today, I saw some of you driving down your road in your vehicle. And you couldn't enjoy anything that was going on because of the thoughts that were going through your mind of how you felt in the natural. I saw some people taking a shower, not literally, thank God. (laughs) Woo! That's why I do a lot of thinking. Man, I can sing. Gee, I sound just like Michael Jackson in the shower. Woo-hoo! I'm telling you, man, the acoustics of the shower! Am I the only one that sings in the shower? Alan, do you sing in the shower? Come on, brother. You hear Brother Alan singing like Winnie the Pooh in the shower? Come on now. Huh? Anybody else sing in the shower? All right. Man, I can sing. I sing another day. Go rest high on the mountain. Man, it sounded like angels was tweeting all around in my shower, man. Leanna, you you, you know it's true. I sing to Leanna. I write song. I'm a songwriter, in case some of y'all didn't know. And there's time I'll be so in love with Leanna, and I'm like, and it's so hard because, like, banana is the only word that rhymes with Leanna. It's so hard. Every song I write to her has a banana in it. I have to use that as my my illustration, is Leanna is more beautiful than a banana. You know, it's just hard. But to go back to the shower, and a lot of times God can speak to us and we think about our day and we think about our life, or if you shower in the morning, you think about what you have to do. Some of you so consumed with the natural that you are denying the supernatural from being able to be manifest in your life. And you're stuck. Somewhere between here and there. Lucifer's example. Jesus' example. The Sermon on the Mount. And the last thing that I thought about and the last thing that God laid on my heart to share with you tonight was 
literally my favorite worship song of all time. That when we first started Restoration, we had no praise team. It was Wes, Kelly, and I for the most part. And I played the guitar, and Kelly sang with me. And Wes banged around on the piano. Brother Bill found some bongos somewhere and would beat around on those. This big, cheesy grin smile. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. King James says that he became sin who knew no sin that we might become the sons of God. If Jesus didn't know what it was like to be natural. It would be hard to accept his words from the Sermon on the Mount. But when Jesus was speaking these things, understand that while he was looking at the crowd, there were people gathering right beside him planning to kill him. There were people on the side of him, people that he was even in his inner circle that were part of his leadership that were selling him out to betray him. And yet, even though he was in the natural, he spoke supernaturally to you and I. Number one, There ain't nobody worth going to hell over. And if I don't forgive, I won't be forgiven. Number two, if I don't forgive, they own me. You are a slave to your natural enemy. And number three, the only peace that we have is supernaturally. And I don't know where you are in your life. I know where I am in mine. And we all need to let some things go. But it's unnatural. Exactly. Don't do the natural. Do the unnatural. Don't be Lucifer exalting ourselves and our issues and our problems. Be like Christ and lower ourselves and humble ourselves and be the servant that God would have us to be. I know who I am in Christ. I know who you are in Christ. And we are no longer slaves to sin. You say, preacher, you said we sin. Yeah, we can sin all that, but you can get victory. You can get sanctified. The Holy Spirit can help you stay cleansed. He can lead you and guide you and comfort you from day to day. If you pray, listen, if you're praying and you're reading your Bible and you're acting unnatural. So if you're singing that song, you make me feel like a natural woman. Then then you should be talking to the devil. Because the devil wants you to be natural.
Would you stand with me all over the building, please, tonight?